Hey YouTube, it's Jay. Uh, time for a, another step in our journey. Uh, when we're talking about how good a player plays, what we're really doing is evaluating what I call the five pillars of pool. Okay, There are five disciplines in pool which will determine where you are in the spectrum, okay? So, the first thing is shot making. Okay, so, shot making, how well you pocket a ball. Um, now this one's kind of obvious. If you can't make a ball in the pocket, then you can't win the game, right? Okay. So shot making is the very first pillar. Um, shot making is on its own. You can be an incredible shot maker and never rise above a C. Once you hit C, once you're a C player, you are as good a shot maker, or, or you can, let me say this a different way. You can make every shot in the game as a C player. There are, you're, you're maybe not going to be as consistent as somebody that's a higher level, but you're capable of making every shot in the game. You understand the theory of where I contact the ball, it goes that direction. If I, if I hit it, if I have an object ball and I hit it here, that object ball is going to go that way. We all understand that at a C level, you you understand that there's there's no mystery to it. Um, it even recreational players who uh, the only time they shoot is when they go out to a bar with their friends. Um, they understand this concept. May not be very good at it because they don't put the time in to become consistent, but they're capable of making every shot on the table. Um, basic shot on the table. There are advanced shots that you don't know, like the Mass A, until you get to that level. But as a C player, especially one who watches videos like these, you know of the existence of every shot on the table, and you are capable of making all of them some of the time. So shot making is really the first skill, and that's how you get to be a C player. Okay, the second pillar is the break. That's a pillar of its own because it is the most important shot in the game of pool. Okay? If you can make shots, that's great, but if you don't have a good break, you don't get the opportunity to make the shots. So, break is typically number two, and that's having a good break and average shot making skill will get you to a B. Okay? Low B. The third pillar is angle management. And that's what we've been talking about. That's what we've been talking about with the leave zones and with talking about getting the ball in and out of the rail, that's all angle management, okay? With good angle management, you, you can move up into the high B range, okay? Good angle management will move you into the high B range. Four, is what we're going to talk about today. Distance management. What is distance management? Well, we're going to talk about that today. That's what this video is about. And I wanted to point this out because um, distance management is uh, controlling the 
distances on the table. And we'll talk about that in depth here in just a minute. And the fifth pillar is risk management. Kind of hard to write that one, but risk management. Okay, so can you pocket balls? How good is your break? And then these three are actually, they, they work together, okay? So you're using angle management to manage your distance. You're using your distance and your angle management to manage your risk. And risk management is kind of the holy grail of all of it, okay? When you come down to the pro level play, to the very highest level of play, risk management and angle management are the two things that are going to determine your success, okay? I consider these, the break and shot making, good enough to get you to a B plus or an A minus. This is A to pro. Okay? These two alone can get you to a B plus or an A minus. These are what move you past A. And the sooner you learn them, by the way, if you learn these three concepts as a C player, you will move up to a B or even a low A, even if your shot making and your break aren't great. So these three can move you up. See, here's the thing. Everybody that's at the same level in the game can make the same shots, okay? When you're talking about pros, they can make the same shots. Efren Reyes, great player, phenomenal execution. Um, but all those shots that he pulled off, his infamous Z shot, we were already shooting the Z shot. We weren't doing it very often because of risk management. It's a very risky shot. And in fact, um, he was playing for a hit uh, and it happened to hit exactly right to go in the pocket. That's how the Z shot happened. He was playing for a hit. Um, and it, it ended up going in and became one of the most famous shots in the game of pool. Um, shot making, everybody at the same level has the same shot making ability. Now, that's not necessarily true of break, okay? If you're talking about uh, players that are in that A and B range, um, they may have different breaks, and what distinguishes them and makes the difference between two players of the same level at that A and B level, the one with the lesser break probably does these things better. The one with the better break may do these a little less, assuming that they've settled into their actual playing ability. Okay, so five pillars, shot making, break, angle management, distance management, risk management. Are the five pillars. We've been talking about angle management. The next step in angle management is going to be a video on bringing the cue ball out of the rail, but before we can do that, we have to talk about distance management because it's going to come into play. So let me set this aside and let's move over to the table. All right, so in distance management, there are three distances that we need to be aware of and we need to understand. Okay, they are how far the object ball is away from the pocket. Number two, how far the cue ball is away from the object ball. And number three, how far do we have to travel to get our leave? That versus that. Okay, those are the three distances. Now let's talk about why each of those is important. So first, object ball distance to the pocket. If I have an object ball and my distance to the pocket is fairly close, 
I have a fairly wide amount of contact area that I can hit on that ball. Let me show you what that looks like. So when you're looking at this, we know that the edges of the one ball have to be inside the, the horns to make it. In order to do that, the center of the, the one ball has to go a little bit inside like this. And if we cross it across the center of the one ball, you can As see the ball gets further from the pocket, that contact area gets smaller. So now if we look at the two this, to the same places, it's a little bit smaller. We measure it the same way. If we go to the three, it's even smaller yet. And then at the four, it is a very small point. So let's put those all together. And so you can see the green contact zones and you can see how they get smaller and smaller and smaller. They're getting about half the size every time you go 12 inches. Every bit of this gets small until we get all the way down the table and we have a shot like this. And so you can see on this five, it's just a small point. It has to be perfect to make the ball. The further away the object ball is from the pocket, the smaller the contact area that we can hit and still make the ball. Okay? Seems self-evident, but that's important. And why is it important? Well, number one, is it means that I don't have to be as accurate on that ball as I do on this ball. I don't have to be as accurate on this ball as I do on this ball. The further away from the pocket it is, the harder it is to make in the pocket. Ooh, the reason this is important is first of all just to know that you have to be more accurate when it's further. <clears throat> but second, if I have a ball sitting here, and I have a choice between being on this side of it for that corner, or that side of it for that corner, if those are my two choices, let's say this pocket's blocked somehow. Um, if I have those two choices, this pocket, is, this pocket is slightly easier to make the ball in than this one is. Let's say I have something like this straight up and down the table, okay? It's a long shot, and for whatever reason, I have to go for it. I would rather shoot this ball into that pocket because it's slightly closer to that pocket than this pocket. You see? So, okay, so distance the object ball is from the pocket determines the level of precision you need on the hit, uh, the contact on the object ball. If it's sitting in the pocket, I can hit that ball almost anywhere and it will go in, okay? If on the other hand I'm out here, I have to be extremely precise on how I shoot it. Now, I'm not saying to take anything for granted. What we're, what we're talking about here is in shot selection, we always want to try to choose the pocket where we have the best angle to go in, right? Where we have the best odds of making the ball, especially if it's a long shot like this. If I have a shot like this, I have a choice. I can try to cut it in this pocket or I can try to cut it in that pocket. This pocket is going to be significantly easier to make, okay? Even though it's a backward cut and I'm gonna to have to hit it kind of thin. This pocket is easier to make the ball in than that one is. Okay, so when we're thinking about leaves, we're going to think about that. Now, let's talk about the second of these, how far the cue ball is from the object ball. There are two things that come into play here. One is, if I'm sitting like this, okay, it is much easier to be accurate on that contact point than it is if I'm down here. The further away the cue ball is, the more accurate and the straighter my stroke has to be. So you can see the red angle here. That is our margin for error on making this shot from the close cue ball. Now this is the margin for error on the shot for the long cue ball. If you put them both together, you'll see 
the long one, you have less than one degree of variance, and the close one, you have three degrees. It's a big difference. This is very, very, very forgiving. I can hit that with a horrible stroke and still make the ball. If, on the other hand, I'm down here and I hit it with a bad stroke, I may miss that ball because there's so much distance in between the cue and the object ball. Now, the second thing that comes into play, and we talked about this a little bit when we were talking about stun shots and swerve shots, is that the friction of the carpet, the further away you are, the more of that friction you have, and so top and bottom English will not necessarily hold all the way to that ball you have to hit harder to have the same action that you have there. And when you hit harder, that means your stroke is more, you have to be more precise with your stroke because if you make a mistake hitting hard, you miss the ball. Because what happens to make contact with a cushion, if it hits softly, it can sometimes brush by and, and fall in, where if it's hard, it gets rejected, okay? so. We want a, a nice medium stroke. We don't want to roll the ball, so to speak. We, we do want to shoot it, but when we do, we don't want to shoot this any harder than we have to, okay? Just enough speed to make the ball and get your leave, whatever your leave might be. Okay, so if I'm here, my stroke is not really affected. If I'm here, now, Top English and bottom English aren't going to hold as well. That's why that long straight in shot with your next shot at this end of the table down here is one of the hardest shots in the game because you have to hit it straight and you have to get enough bottom English on it. You have to hit it hard enough that your bottom English is still spinning when you make contact with that ball and try to come back. Okay, so the further it is, the less top and bottom you're going to have at the time of contact. And that's going to come in really big when we start talking about English off the ball. Okay, so if I'm trying to draw this ball back for that three, okay, I am dead straight in. I've got the, the infamous full table draw that I have to do. Um, I have to hit this pretty hard. If I, if I try to just do a basic draw, I'm not going to get there. And you see how hard I hit that. I did lift up a little so I didn't have as much English as I could have. Drawing this ball the length of the table on a full length shot is a difficult shot. Now on the other hand, if I have a relatively close shot, okay, now my draw is going to hold easily and I can come back down the table and I don't even have to hit this hard. And I can come all the way down the table, okay? So the closer you are, the more your draw and your follow the hold. Um, let, me, let me point something out. I've mentioned this in other videos. When we're talking about friction and, and its effect on the cue ball, you've heard me say it only really affects the draw and the follow, and that is that is accurate. Okay. So if I if I draw this ball. You can see it slowed down and it, then it rolled forward, right? If I put follow on this, you're not going to see this real well, but it follows and goes. But if I put just pure right or pure left on this, the carpet doesn't affect the right and the left. So I can hit this slow with right hand English and it will continue to spin and that right hand English will take effect. Okay, you see that? As long as I, the, the top and bottom English, the carpet affects it. Side spin does not. Now, what if I put a combination of the two? What if I hit bottom right? Okay, what if I hit bottom right hand English slow? What's going to happen? 
Well, what's going to happen is the ball will be spinning this way, right? Because I'm going to hit it down here, which is going to force the ball to spin this way. What, as it's traveling, it loses the backward spin, but it continues to maintain the side spin. Okay? You understand that? So, if I hit this slow with bottom right, it will be spinning backwards, then it'll be spinning forward, it'll pick up a little bit of swerve because of the, the effect of the ball pulling sideways, but it will hold the side spin until it hits that rail. See? And there's the side spin. So, understand that on a long distance shot, it is possible to lose your bottom spin, but still maintain the side spin. It's possible to lose the top spin and just have the momentum of the ball and still maintain the side spin because the top and bottom are affected by the carpet. The side spin is not, okay? All right, so that's the second one. It's distance between the cue ball and the object ball. And the third one I was talking about is the distance to your leave. Now this one is not about being harder or easier. The other two work. The other two have a lot to do with being hard with, with the sh difficulty of the shot. Okay? This one has to do with where you leave it in the leave zone. So you remember our leave zones. Alright. So here's a quick Reminder of your zones, you've got the no control zone, which is letting the cue ball go, the rolling and the stun zones. If I'm leaving this, and I only need to go a little ways, and I don't want to travel a lot, I want to leave the cue ball in the stun zone of the leave zone. That's those two green areas, okay? And if I happen to get straight in, this one, it would work on. But if I if I only want to move a little ways, I want to be in those two green zones. Call them the stun zones. See, I can hit that hard and I'm not going to go anywhere. If on the other hand, I need to go all the way down the table. Let's say I've got something like this right here and I need to go all the way down the table, I want to be in those rolling zones. Those are the, the, the um, yellow zone. I think they're yellow. Uh, those, are, those are the zones out here off on the bigger angles. And the reason I want to be out there is that I don't want to hit this any harder than I hit the last one. But I want the cue ball to roll after the hit. So see? Very easy to get that lead because I was in the right zone. If I'm not in the right zone, if I'm in the stun zone on this, let's say I'm right here, now I'm in the stun zone, now I have to use a lot of English to get my leave, and in fact I can't even go around the table and use my spin, I have to go straight up and down the table. And you see how hard I hit that with top English, and it barely got there. So, distance to the leave determines whether you want to be in the green stun zone or the, I think it's yellow or orange um, rolling zone. Okay, the further it is, the further off center you want to be up to the point where it makes the shot more difficult. So, those are your zones, and, and again, if I'm, if I'm somewhere like here, now I'm in the rolling zone, now I can just roll down the table for the shot. I don't have to take hard, I can just roll down the table. See how easy it is to get that to move? If, on the other hand, I'm in the green stun zone, now, I have to use either draw or follow to compensate for my bad angle. Okay, so 
when your leave is far away, you want to be in the rolling zone. When the leave is close and you and you don't want to move the cue ball much, you want to be in the sun zone. Those are those are that's easy enough. That's the managing of distance for uh, for your leave. What is the optimal distance? Okay, what is the optimal distance to be from the ball? And what is the optimal distance for the ball to the pocket? Well, we don't really have a lot of control over the ball in the pocket, so we have to take what we get, right? But if we can get a ball that's within about a foot of the pocket, that is the easiest shot in the game, uh, kind of. It's, it's the easiest shot to both make the ball and control. Where do we want the cue ball? Typically, we don't want it any closer than about six inches, okay? Any closer than that, we run the risk of ending up like this, okay? We end up like that, we're kind of screwed because now we have no control over the cue ball. We don't know where the cue ball is going to go after the hit. We do, and you'll understand that after the, the angle of the cue off the rail after uh, the next video, but as a general rule, you don't want the cue ball any closer than about six inches. That gives you enough room to complete a stroke, even if you're straight in. On this, I don't have to pull my stroke, I can just hit it, okay? If it's closer than six inches, I may have to do some kind of nip stroke where I'm going to pull the cue away. Or you have to elevate. If you're, if you're really close, you might have to elevate to avoid the foul. So you might have to do something like that. Okay, we don't want to have to do that. So the, the optimal distance is from six inches to about 18 inches. At 18 inches, that shot is still a very easy shot. You still have your full stroke. And even if that shot is somewhere out here with a cut, as long as you're in between six and 18 inches, you still have full control of your English. You still have uh, you still have all of your options open um, and you have enough room to get a full stroke. So optimal distance, 6 to 18 inches from the object ball. All right, so five pillars, shot making break, angle management, distance management, and risk management. Now when we get into the next video, we're going to put the distance management and the angle management together, okay? Uh, you have to when you're talking about English off a ball and what it does coming out of the rail after contact, you have to talk about distance to be accurate in that. So anyhow, that's distance management. Don't forget, like, subscribe, ding the notification bell, and we'll see you next time.